Alright everybody, welcome back to a, another fun series. Today we are going to be focusing on everything tibial rotation based. Um, really important for effective flexion extension at the knee, um, helping avoid knee pain, making sure we're powerful when we squat and when we sprint and when we run. So I've got a couple of tools to help show kind of what I mean by tibial rotation. So in order to clear the hip joint when we squat, right, it's a lot more difficult to squat in that narrow position. It's a lot more comfortable to slightly externally rotate the hip. Now, when the foot is in contact with the ground, we want it stable. We don't want it to move a whole lot. So there's two things that have to happen in order to accomplish this, you know, stable midfoot and powerful hip motion. The tibia has to be able to internally rotate and laterally glide. It moves out to the side. So as I start in this extended position, you can see the red dot is facing forward. As I bring the hip up into extra rotation to clear it, notice how my femur is now pointing this direction, but my tibia and my foot are still in a neutral position. So what happens when we don't have this? This is what it looks like, right? We squat and we bring, we sit down into that and our feet externally rotate. We're not able to keep those feet slightly pointed forward because that tibia cannot move internally. So it flexes, it moves internally, and when we extend, it moves back into external. So both movements are really beneficial. They're coupled together. Flexion with internal, extension with external. So I'll show you what that looks like on a fixed foot position. So tip at the top, red dot for my tibial plateau. As I sink into that squat, my tibia is gonna shift and laterally glide to the side. My foot's keeping four corners and that tibia is slightly rotating internally. You'll have to look at the aerial video that I'm posting after this to kind of see what that looks like from the top um, and how these condyles are slightly offset now. So as it flex, it internally rotates, it extends, externally rotates back into that neutral position. Okay, so how do you know if yours is good or not? I'm so glad you asked. So you'll need a stool, um, a nice surface where your foot can slide in your hands. So red dot facing forward. This is my tibial plateau. I find that by taking the tip of my patella and coming straight down and you can kind of feel that ridge right there, that bump. So I'm gonna squeeze here and keeping my big toe and heel in contact with the ground, I'm going to try to rotate that lower leg bone. So first I'm gonna externally rotate. My toes are gonna come out to the side, keeping my big toe and heel down. It's about 35 degrees I might give myself. Notice my upper leg isn't moving. I'm not shifting my hip. That's why it's really important to brace that so you don't get any extra accessory movement from the hip. And then for internal, we'll do the same thing, but we're going to come in. So, bracing the leg, keeping the big toe and heel in contact with the ground. This one's a lot harder. Now, right there, you can kind of see my big toes coming off. I'm cheating a little bit. So, I'm going to reset, push my foot in the ground, rotate it, and I've got maybe 20, 25 degrees there. It's not a whole lot. Okay? So, pre check. Look at what the status of it is first. See, compare to both sides. Do I feel more mobile on the left side versus the right side? Check that out. Then you're gonna do the exercises and see if it makes it any better. If it doesn't, or if it does, drop it in the comments, let me know. Happy to uh, be open to suggestions that help me improve my practice because then that improves the patients that we see in the future.